North Shore Boulder is going place today to create a level playing field. I love it. Let's get another one. Pocket doors that sat inside these walls for 120 years, today they get restored. And today we'll learn how to lay out mosaic tile. What happened to all this plumbing here? I've never seen anything like this before. There's already rot going on in that trunk. So what have you found up here? Well, a bit of a surprise. It's really the classic plumber's lament. Nice. It's five bathrooms, it's a kitchen, it's a full new mechanical. It's, it's going to be a biggie. Sounds like you guys have a plan. I think we do. <laughs> Money's in the detail. That is beautiful. Connor and welcome back to this old house here on Cape Ann, Massachusetts, up on the North Shore. And this beautiful lot that we have, just about a mile from the water, nice wooded area with all of this ledge and granite that the original house was built around. That shingle style right there, originally a summer house, built in 1890. Now the only new space we have, well, it's this garage right here. Two bays, but I gotta say, Charlie and his guys did a nice job of making this fit in with the rest of the house. Lots of progress, so let me show you around. This is a two-bay garage, and it's probably the way the homeowners will now enter the house. Hey, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. You can see that it is fully insulated. Kevin Bile and his guys put radiant heat in the concrete slab. Thank you for that. And then you'll enter through here into a new mudroom. Heath, good morning. Hi, Kevin. So over to here, there is a full bath with a shower right in there, and this is the new mudroom entry. And as you walk back through here into the heart of the house, you can go to the back. This will be family room with kitchen off to this side. And then this opening right here, this was added so that you could see straight through to the front of the house. And check that out. Entryway, the beautiful diamond leaded glass windows right there. And then we've got the fireplace. That's going to be restored and all fixed up. Bill, how are you? John, Tommy, what's going on? I'm trying to uh, figure out what's going on with these uh, pocket doors. You know, they're over 100 years old, and pocket doors are really sweet. For so, original, huh? Original. See how quiet oh, they are? That is beauty. Look at the size of that thing. Still run good. That is awesome. But this one over here, not so good. It actually fell off the wheels right here, and we had to pull it out of the opening. And I've never actually seen this hardware before. Uh, what I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up above. We've had to strip the plaster off of this wall here. Yep. I'm going to take off this piece up here on the top, that cap piece, so I can reach down and pull these wheels up. And then I'm going to see how they fit on the door. All right, see if we can lift that out. Oh, what have we got in there? Reach down, get the wheel. There it is. Oh, cool. Look at that. And it looks like some kind of an adjustment right there. And this goes into the door. So we've got to get that into the door and see how it holds in place. Check this out. Richards, Wilcox Manufacturing from Illinois. Huh. Patent pending May 24th, 1881. <laughs> I, say, I, I would say these are definitely original to the house. Still in service on one side. Yeah, and here's the other one. Very cool. Nice, huh? Yeah. So this is the top of the door that came off. Right. OK, so now this, this one will go this way, and the other one will drop in the other way. But this is interesting. So if you look at these pins, because oh. of the angle that they're on, they're yeah. on a diagonal. Because they're on a diagonal, it's the adjustment for the height of the door, so you can see how this wheel goes further away from the door when I move it back. Up or down. Yep. And then this one here? That little opening there is so that you can get to the screw that locks it into place. Now these screws on both of them have fallen out. I thought for sure we'd be able to find them inside the opening. Couldn't do it. So I picked up a couple of screws, and I'm going to have to probably modify this hole just a little bit so I can get the head of the screw to fit in there. See that head fits in there? Yep. yep. All right. Good. Pretty good. And to get the other one to work. Now if I tighten this up, does it stay there? Yeah. Holy smokes. Yep. Rock solid. Pretty cool. I love it. 
All right, so now we have to take the wheels off, put them back inside the opening. Also good right there. And it's gonna be a trick to get these on the door while it's in the hole. All right, so I gotta get those two pins lined up with the holes. Oh my gosh, that one right in. Look at that. Come on up. Give me one more second. All right, the thread's caught. Okay, just keep going. Tighter to pull this up. Snug it up. All right, let's see if that gets over okay. there. Let's see how they meet. <laughs> oh, look at that. Nice and quiet, huh? Boy, that thing slides like it's brand new. All right, so let's bring them together. Holy mackerel. That really slides easy. Right in the middle there. We used there. Very right. nice. What do you think, Tommy? Get right. another 120 years out of these? Well, 100 anyway. <laughs> Now you can watch This Old House and Ask This Old House anytime, anywhere. Download our new app to stream full episodes to your tablet, your TV, and your phone. Binge on classic episodes, catch up on recent renovations, and get step-by-step -step help projects all around the house. And best of all, it's free. The most trusted home improvement information is now available on your Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, iOS, and Android devices. Download the This Old House streaming app today. Our homeowners have asked for a little bit of solar power on this house. So up here from the third floor, you can see the roof that we're putting it on. It comes off the second floor. Danny is our installer. Danny, good to meet you. Hey, nice to meet you too, Kevin. So I'm told you're giving us a new type of panel, sort of a low profile panel. Low profile panel, it's a roof integrated panel or solar system. So what does that mean? So it's gonna be direct, directly attached to the roof. And when I say roof integrated, there's not gonna be shingles underneath. The solar panels actually act as the roofing system. Really? Okay, so I am seeing some shingles, but these are just gonna be around the perimeter? Yep, yeah, we'll step flash with the shingles underneath but other than that, we just have our roofing underlayments directly underneath the panel. So you can sort of see it here, shingles, which we're used to. This is the peel and stick layer. Yep, that's exactly right. So under the panels, we'll have the peel and stick and then this layer right here. Yep, the fireproofing layer. That's, uh, that's what makes our system class A fire rated. Nice. So what allows it to be so close to the deck. All right, Heath, you're clipped in. I appreciate right. you helping out. Um, I know you would have anyway, but you actually have to do this, right? We do. So, yeah, in Massachusetts, we're actually required to have a licensed electrician assist in the installation of solar panels. Danny, have our best man. All right. Oh, let me get out of the way. Panel's coming in. So I'll take one in if you just want to keep beam it. So first of, you said six panels, Danny? Six panels, that's right. What are we looking at here? So we're looking at our 360-watt uh, our solar cell, uh, 60 cells within this solar panel. Um, like we mentioned earlier, we've got our racking integrated into the panel on all sides. Um, what's really special about this one is how each panel integrates with one another. The next panel will sit on top and engage with this rubber gasket to prevent any wind-driven uh, wind rain. And these feet right here along the back? So these feet are what attach to the deck itself. Yep. So we've got five feet on each panel. These are adjustable too, so if you've got a wavy deck, we can actually adjust these to keep a straight level plane across the solar panels. And then this guy? Now this is the brains beyond the operation. This is a microinverter. So this is actually what takes the DC power from the solar panel and converts it to the AC that's usable in the house. So you're gonna take one, you're gonna start down to the far end and work your way back? Work our way back. We've got three panels in one row and then we'll hop up to the second. Each one of our panels has a grounding lug. Um, this grounds the whole system to one another. And this is where all our wires, all our feeders, our AC wires, and our grounding is gonna come through via our junction box. So next component is our top flashing support. For each one of my top flashing is gonna cover this whole section. So what sort of an output are we going to get from this array? So from this array, uh, we've got six panels, uh, 2.16 uh, kilowatts on the DC side. Any guess how much of their power load it's going to handle? Um, on average for this system side, it's going to feed about 20% of their usage. Cool. All right. Well, Danny, thank you very much. 
And, uh, you know, feel free to keep our electrician. <laughs> <laughs> Want to tackle all your home improvement projects with confidence? Join This Old House Insider, a new streaming service from This Old House, the iconic Emmy-winning series that inspired a generation of home enthusiasts. Stream over 1,000 episodes of This Old House and Ask This Old House commercial-free. Watch it all in the This Old House app. And join live online Q&As with our experts. Best of all, you can try Insider free for seven days. To join, go to thisoldhousemembership.com. So the last thing you would think is we needed more boulders on site, but we do because we needed to create a level plain space for their daughter. Everything was a steep slope before, so these boulders are brought in so we could help retain that slope and it doesn't wash out. So over here, we have an assortment of boulders. Hey, Fred. Hey, Jen. How you doing? Good. How you doing? Good to see you. So you want to tell us why you have them all laid out like this? Well, when the truck comes and they dump them, they're just in a big pile, so I like to spread them out. Mm -hmm. Take like a mental inventory, yep. see what we have, take note of the size, shape, color. Um, so as I'm building the wall, I can remember, hey, I saw that rock earlier, go back, grab it, put it on the wall. Yep, Hopefully it's it like fits. the memory game. You have Hopefully to figure out your space. It's you know, a form of they art. They don't always fit, but. Yep, that looks pretty good. Nice and tight. Now we're going to find another rock to fit in over these two rocks, the uh, one over two, two over one. Love that. All right, so we'll fit one that fits like a puzzle piece right in. Yep. All right. All right, let's go rock shopping. I think I remember seeing a few over here that might work. Ooh, I like that this one. Let's give it a shot. Even the colors line up. I love it. Let's get another one. There you go. That's nice and flat. That one's nice. Wall's really coming out great. Yeah, it's turning out nice. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming out in the snow today, and uh, good seeing Sounds you, Fred. Sounds good. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Hey, Richard. Hi, Kevin. How are you? All right. A lot of progress down here, not just for this job, but going back 120 years. Yeah. I mean, there was never an original heating system, and they added one for the caretaker because it was just a summer place. But now, we have a heating system for the next 100 years. A, a nice one, too. Right. Every surface in this building, every horizontal surface has radiant floor heating in it, awesome. all three floors. Awesome. And so we've got a command central board here that we've, we've shown before. But you know what it has is there's three different floor conditions in this building. It is a work of art. Right, it really is. So right here, this mixing valve is for the tile and the concrete. That needs one water temperature. Then the more our value you put on top of the floor, like carpet, this would be the highest water temperature you're going to need. And then hardwood floors comes off here. Yep. So the way it works is it's got, a, it's got a mixing valve right here that puts out the right water temperature, a brutally smart pump. This pump is so smart, it sort of figures out what it needs all the time, okay, and changes the flow rate to everything. Yep. And then through these boxes, every single loop, see these manifolds? These are all through the building. There's about eight of them through the building will have a little power head like this that'll have a thermostat say yes or no to every single room. So it's wow. it's absolute precision. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay? Okay. So now here's tile, here's carpet, here's wood, and we've got we've got this uh, two lines that are going to go over to our indirect tank. But I want to show you something. Anytime you have a hydronic system, that means you're heating water. You have to have stability. You have to have the air eliminated from it. So this is an air eliminator, and it really is amazing inside. Anytime this is pumping through here, any of the auction bubbles hit these little spindles and it turns into micro bubbles and comes out through here. So it means all the air comes out this way. So you get hydronic stability. Now you can start moving it all over the building, not have an issue. If you didn't have this surface area right here, the air would stay in the water yeah, and could pass right through. Yeah, you might have right to try through. burp it out at different manifolds yeah. and you're chasing it all the time. This thing scrubs it, okay? So this board is for heating, but you said we indirect for right. our hot water right. supply. So right here, these two lines right here come over to an indirect tank. Now, We've used these before, but we've never shown you one naked. <laughs> oh, well, you know, anytime so, you can show me something naked. <laughs> so here is a stainless steel tank, and inside it, it has a coil like this, and it's much longer, the actual coil right. inside. So boiler water passes through this coil. It gives up its heat to the stored volume of water here that started cold and becomes hot. Never mixes. No, no. Nope, it just gives nope. up its heat. 
Now, and then when it's done, look at this, the, the level wow. of insulation That's right like here. Six inches of right, insulation. Right, and that'll be right here, and it'll be on every single surface. So it becomes this super insulated thermos bottle, ready to go for plenty of hot water for all those bathrooms in this building. Indirect, because the fire is over there, and it only comes on when this cools down. One flame in this boiler right here. Yep. And this is our gas-fired condensing boiler. It's a floor-mounted unit. You know, a lot of t has changed in these high-efficiency boilers. Let me show you. So Kevin, we've talked about this before, you know, the heat loss in any building changes all winter long according to how cold it is outside versus how warm you want it inside. So if you have a typical house like we do with those three different floor conditions, the tile, the carpet, and the wood, the water wants to circulate and just gently modulate all winter long and just change a little as it gets colder. And we first went into super efficient gas-fired condensing boilers. Those boilers were all relatively small and wall hung. Now those wall hung boilers were really efficient, except the, the heat delivery system was looking for a gentle supply to it and the boilers got so hot so quick that they fired up and got quickly hot and then it shut off. So they cycled too much. So we really would like to have the burner stay on longer. So the trend has been to go to larger water content heating device so that the burner has a chance to stay on longer at a lower input. You can see that the temperature in the boiler doesn't get super hot. It actually more closely matches what you're looking for out in the system, and that reduces cycling. Mm -hmm. So this is a, what, what a cutaway is of this larger water content boiler. It helps to understand. You know, what? when these... What? <laughs> Look at you. Okay, when these, when these wall-hung boilers used to first came out, the heat exchangers had relatively small water content. You know, this was one and this was another, and these would be stacked together and the flame would come through. And that's the full volume of water that's that you right, had. That's right, either of those. And so with this, you can see a burner right here. The burner comes with this beautiful flame that will just modulate and change according to how, how cold it is outside. But this is how much water content. See it? Water, 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 water everywhere. Wow. So now that water is gently circulating, you know, through the build, out through it. So it'll actually take, it'll actually take the, uh, the burner's input and just stay on. And it seems backwards, right? Because you're going to leave the burner on? Yeah, we're going to leave the burner on, but at the perfectly lowest amount mm -hmm. versus having to come on and off. Also counterintuitive that, in this case, bigger is better That's than right. smaller. It's, yeah, but it really is. We want to reduce cycling because we're inefficient when we're cycling. Right. Beautiful. Love it. Thank you, Isn't Richard. Isn't that cool? Hey, Mike. So the Ferranti van is out front, which means it is time for tiling. They're working up here on the second floor. This is the master bedroom. This is a guest bedroom in here. Mark, how are you? Good, Kevin. How are you doing? All right. Big layout table here. And uh, just off of the bedroom is a guest bathroom. Eric, how are you? Good, Kevin. So this is our little bathroom in here. What are we working with? Well, today we're working with a marble mosaic. Can I see that? Marble. So are both of these uh, light and dark marble? Yep, we, uh, the white is the honed, the gray is the polished. Let me see if I can pick that up in the window reflection. Oh yeah, so the gray reflects and the white is pretty flat. That's the honed. All right, and check that out. So this is on a little bit of a mesh backer. Exactly. So there's a whole bunch of little pieces? Yep, a whole bunch of pieces nice. made into one 10 by 10 square. Cool design with this and that yep. sticking out. All right. Yep. So. Uh, how are you thinking about layout? Walk me through that process, please. Well, Kevin, when we start a layout, most important thing is, um, you, you know, the focal point, big pieces um, when you come in this door. So this right here, threshold, this is the first thing people are exactly. going to see. Exactly, so your eyes are going to go to, follow along the wall here. Another important place. Yep, and right up to the tub. And then I presume you're less concerned about this side just with all the other things going yeah, on? Yeah, a little less concerned. We have the vanity. We have a toilet. It's going to eat up a little bit of room. Okay. Um, but still at the same time, you know, we'll be symmetrical left, uh, left to right, front to back. Right. And you get that symmetry by picking your center lines, which exactly. are already drawn on yep. the floor. Yep. So with big pieces, your point is you don't want a little sliver of a piece like right, right. there because right. we'll see it. All about that appearance. All right. So what are you thinking for layout? Okay, so here we have our crosshairs, we have our, our center lines, mm -hmm. and when we, we're going to lay it out a few different ways. Here we'll start on both sides of the line, again, front to back, left to right. Got it. And uh, we'll check to see what the piece is. This is, this is the thing that I think most people don't appreciate of what you guys do. You know, everyone thinks that you're just cutting tile and putting it down with your grab lines, with your uh, thin set. It's yeah. a lot of layouts. A lot yeah, of a little bit to it. 
a little bit to it. So again, back to left to right, what we have is, that's a big piece. You like that? Yes. Yeah. So we're starting with a, a, a 10 by 10 square, Kevin. So right there, You'll have almost eight and three quarter piece. Nice. I'll take it. Okay, so that's a good line going this way. And if we yep. continue towards the tub. Yep. If we go towards the tub. There's another one for you. Two full pieces. This would be your third full piece. Uh-oh. <laughs> Not too crazy about it. So you'll have a little tiny stub. Give me that again. How many inches was that? Uh, been about two and three quarter inches. So what do you do in that situation? You blow up this? Well, layout? this is where we'll make an adjustment um, and see what we end up with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these. I'm going to split this center line. Okay. The front to back center line. <clears throat> We're going to stay where we are, left to right. We know this one works. We know that, that one way. works. I'm just going to stick this back in there for us. So we basically have adjusted half a tile. Our little two and three quarter inch stub piece is going to be yep. what now with your tape? Looking a lot better. So eight. Almost eight inches. Okay. So with, with that eight inch piece there up against the tub, we'll have the eight inch piece in front of the door. Exactly what we're looking for. Beautiful. Okay. What next? So we'll start cutting these pieces along the wall. We're gonna, uh, we'll cut one now, see how it fits, and then we'll take it from there. Dad, eight and three quarters. Okay. Give that a look, Mark. <laughs> See how you did. I think that's the one. Okay. Put a couple pieces down. Quarter inch by quarter inch notch trowel. A little back butter. No spacers for your separation there? You're just gonna eyeball that? Nope, we're gonna do it by eye. So when you're working with a, a mosaic tile like this, pretty complicated on the mesh, you know, more so than a single tile. Harder, easier, more time consuming or what? Um, definitely time consuming. Being a mosaic, we have 30 something pieces that make up a, a 10 by 10. So compare that to maybe just a regular ceramic. Yeah. Good thing for homeowners to know too, when they pick a tile like this, it's going to take a while. Yeah, it's going to take a little bit of time. Yep, we pay for it two ways. The biggest thing is just, just take your time, have some patience. And then uh, after this, what do you got to do? Let it set up? Yep, we'll let it set up for the day, and then uh, we'll come back the following day and get it grouted. Nice. Mark. Kevin. What do you think? How'd your son do? Looks great. It does, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I like the tile, I like the design, yeah. and you definitely figured out the edges all right. Nice job, guys. Thanks. Thank you. All right, well, that is it for us. But next time, we are going to restore the original leaded glass windows, and Jen is going to start getting plants in the ground. So until then, I'm Kevin O'Connor. I'm Mark Ferranti. I'm Eric Ferranti. For this old house here on Cape Ann. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project. So be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.